All right, welcome to the Church Dropout Podcast. I'm joined by Lisa. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Church Dropout is a podcast. We talk about issues, topics, and teachings related to faith, life, and culture in ways that are sometimes funny, sometimes serious, but always insightful. If you have not already, please like, rate, and subscribe to the channel. Please share the video. We appreciate it. Mm-hmm. So one thing that I think we have a lot of experience in, mm-hmm. um, you know, being a part of the church, mm-hmm. um, and, you know, just I think it's a part of church culture mm-hmm. is retreats. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, retreats are. <laughs> Whoa. What you the... okay? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what that was. Uh, uh, I don't either. It snuck up on me. almost broke me off. <laughs> um. So, you know, retreats are a big part of evangelical culture, Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. Um, Big business. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm not saying that it's always done with ill intentions. I'm just saying that retreats are a huge part of the, um, you know, evangelical establishment, Mm -hmm, right? mm -hmm. And marriage conferences, you know, they're a staple Mm -hmm. and big bucks. And, um and we've been to a lot of them. Yes. And uh and so you know I read I, I came across a tweet and I couldn't find um the survey mm-hmm. that this individual did. Mm-hmm. But I thought it was pretty interesting. Okay, they were uh she was talking about um how marriage conferences uh and marriage intensives mm-hmm. can be manipulative. Okay. Okay. And uh, I never thought of it in those terms, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I've shared with you, I've always felt a little bit uncomfortable with some of the things that happen at the retreat mm-hmm. or at a marriage conference mm-hmm. uh, intensive and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think she hits on some of those things, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, um, yeah, I don't know. I just feel like it's a really good thought Mm -hmm. and maybe something to to dialogue about especially again with the experiences that i know we've had yeah um you know concerning marriage conferences and retreats Mm -hmm. and stuff Mm -hmm. like that you Mm -hmm. know what i mean Mm -hmm. um so any thoughts just so So, um i just remember going on a lot of like women retreats like i went on those like annually (laughs) absolutely and um I felt like I was, well, see, I don't want to get ahead of you. So that's why that's I, okay. I, no, let's, I, let's I just kind of felt up. like um, I was, it put me in a state of mind that when I came home, yep. I was the only one still in that state of mind. And you know what I mean? It was like, I, it was honestly like, cause it had, like you did nothing wrong, but it was like, okay, was I really changed or, you know what I mean? Cause if, cause if I'm expecting to come home and, and I'm expecting things from you, then that's, that's the wrong mindset. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah. And then that I'd come home on a Sunday and Monday I'm back to like, okay, did I even go? Yeah. So basically what you're saying is, is I killed your high. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 100%. <laughs> I would not have been able to say it any better. (laughs) You know, I I think that's part of the manipulatory, I think that's a word, Uh experience, Uh right? Uh I think retreats, conferences are meant to give the the participants an experience. Mm -hmm. And that's always the part that's been uncomfortable for me. Yeah. Is the planned antics, the the things that happen on the retreat Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that... um, you know, kind of build you into or point you towards this emotion, this yeah. feeling of change. Yeah. That's not necessarily really grounded in right. a in a whole lot. Right. It's it's experiential, right? Mm-hmm. And like you say, when you come off the mountain, because mm-hmm. they're always done. Up on the mountain. Yeah. On the mountain. <laughs> in the mountain somewhere. Yeah. Well, you, well, ours was be up on the mountain and the guys would always seem to be down by the water. And I'm like, why are they by the water and we're up on the mountain? <laughs> With heels on and slipping down. There. Okay, but see, you know, you're talking about some real religious Baptist yes. conferences where you yes. had to dress up. Yes. Okay, to yes. go to a conference. Yes. You out in the woods and yes. sisters got on heels and, and dresses. And all white. 
the all white crazy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's a whole nother issue. Yes. <laughs> but, but no, I definitely hear what you're saying. Like the experience is, I mean, that's the problem. Mm-hmm. And that's the part that gets somewhat, that becomes, you know, manipulation mm-hmm. to a certain degree. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And then the things that happen at these retreats, right. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, um, you know, there's always at least the retreats that we've been to like a marriage conference. I remember one time we went to a marriage conference and this one wasn't out. This was more of a weekend intensive type deal. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and, um, at the end of the conference, we had to renew our vows, mm-hmm. you know, and, you know, we did it in front of a witness mm-hmm. and, you know, it was kind of like this, uh, if you, if you said you didn't want to do it, it'd mm-hmm. be a problem. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it was this, I don't know. It just, it was manipulation mm-hmm. to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. It was manipulation. And then the idea that somehow everything that you've been through is gone, mm-hmm. you know what mm-hmm. I mean? It's mm-hmm. gone and it's wiped away with, you know, making this declaration. And right. then it's the same on these individual retreats too. Right. 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 You know, you know, you burn your sins and throw them in the campfire Mm -hmm. and, you know, or, you know, I can tell you some stories. I can Mm -hmm. tell you some things that have happened at some of these retreats. And I'm just like, looking back, I'm just saying, wow, like, yeah, it's, it's definitely a manipulative experience Mm -hmm. that's meant to give you some sort of experience and the feeling that things have changed, but it's not really based in any transformation. Right. Right. And, and, and I, I feel like, sorry, I feel like mm -hmm. it's important to have a, um, continuation some type of because some some of these they're stripping things from you and now they're stripping things away from you and it's like now you see yourself differently or see your marriage differently and it's like okay now what do I do like I I need further you know I need you know more of this you know what I mean so how do I continue with more of this throughout my life you know what I mean right so yeah and I think that's super important and you know it's it's just not what these things are made for. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it's not discipleship. Mm. It's not. Mm-hmm. And again, I think this is a part of kind of the larger evangelical industrial complex as it relates to how we even think spirituality works mm-hmm. and um, how we call the body to engage um, discipleship mm-hmm. and spirituality. It's usually by again, having an experience Yeah. Um, talking about change, but not really walking with people yeah. as it relates to that change. Yeah. And then really, honestly, not even being open and upfront with really what the problems are. Yes. And this especially happens in marriage mm-hmm. uh, conferences, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, because there are all sorts of things that are going on in people's marriage. And usually these intensive in these conferences don't even scratch the surface. Yeah. And, they even manipulate some people and kind of getting ahead here, I guess, into some of the stuff that was said, but even manipulating some people to stay in relationships that they probably, um, you know, should not be in mm-hmm. at that particular moment. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Because of the euphoric experience that mm-hmm. all of a sudden things have changed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, um, and so again, this is, this happens in, conservative, mm-hmm. charismatic alike. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've been to on both sides mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. it's usually always the same. Yeah. Um, reform, non-reformed. Mm-hmm. There's always these experiences that come with it. Yeah. And um, there's usually not a whole lot of transformation that happens. Mm-hmm, right. Mm-hmm. And again, I think this points to the issue with evangelicalism and how we see discipleship yeah. and how we got to be careful yeah. that we're not manipulating people into experiences um, that are not real experiences. Right. They're not grounded and people end up getting hurt. So right. what I want to do real quickly is, is just read, um, you know, some of the things that came out of the, uh, the, um, post? Uh, not the post. Well, I'm going to read from the post, but came out of the survey. Oh, okay. And like okay. I said, I couldn't do the survey. I couldn't find the survey. Mm-hmm. Um, but the person's name is Gretchen Baskerville. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think there was a podcast that she was on that she talked about some of these things. Mm. Um, but I wanted the survey itself. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. I, I wanted the survey. But anyway, I just want to read a couple of the things that was mentioned. The survey entailed 330 people who attended uh, Christian marriage intensives. Mm-hmm. Right. And an intensive is a little bit different than a conference. We've been to those as well. But intensives 
usually require a lot more money up front. Like mm-hmm. it's more specialized and, mm-hmm. you know, like, you know, maybe you have a more popular speaker, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. it's, it's usually a smaller group, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, still large, but mm-hmm. a smaller group. Um, and by intensive, it, you know, it's supposed to be more in depth. Yeah. You understand what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, and so, um, so, uh, so yeah, so 330 people were, um, were polled. Um, and here's just some of the things that came out of it and then we can comment as we go. Okay. All right. Weekend to remember. You remember that, mm-hmm. right? Dennis Rayner company was most often mentioned, mentioned for their manipulative techniques more than other popular Protestant Christian multi-day marriage retreats, according to the response from survey and, and participants. Mm-hmm. And again, that goes back to some of the things that you're asked to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You know, renewing wedding vows, mm-hmm. um, you know, um, uh, making, uh, uh, you know, writing out your confessional, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. just these, these, these manipulative tactics to believe that, you know, things are, are well, mm-hmm. or that, these things have been moved past mm-hmm. or just the conference itself is built around activity. Mm-hmm. It's built around action and yeah. activity. You know what I mean? Um, survey participants told us that uh, oh, a weekend to remember retreat was used as a uses high pressure vow renewal mm-hmm. ceremony and group pressure to get attendees to hold up signs saying their spouse is not their enemy. Mm. And, I guess, you know, at at glance, it mm-hmm. seems very innocent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But imagine if a woman is being abused by her husband. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Imagine if a woman is, and not, not even just physically, but maybe it's emotionally, or right. there's neglect, right. or um, what if her husband in that moment really is her enemy? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. And the peer pressure of being in that type of environment where these details are not being talked about. These right. deep things are not being exposed. Mm-hmm. And then having at the end of the retreat to agree to something, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. peer pressure. Right. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, it, it's, it's dangerous. Yeah. And yeah. It's scary. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, some found themselves in more danger afterwards when their spouses, ter- when their spouses turned these public declarations of commitment against them. Nearly seven out of 10 or seven in 10 participants whom we surveyed are now separated or divorced. Mm. So, uh, you know, using that commitment as, mm. you know, to hanging it over the spouse's head. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. You said mm-hmm. everything is fine. You right. said everything is okay. Right. 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 Um, the, the magical cure, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. For, for the relationship. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And the sad part is, is that many are now separated and or divorced, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, as a result, which yeah. is, which is crazy. Right. Right. You Cause know? it's almost like would they have been if they didn't go. Right. And, mm-hmm. and, you know, if these conferences were more based on meeting real needs mm-hmm. and not just surface level interaction and commitment. Right. Um, some of these things may have been rooted out, Mm -hmm. but again, you know, realistically, could that happen in a weekend? Right. Right. Exactly. But that's the problem. We have churches who are pushing these things Mm -hmm. as solutions Mm -hmm. to people fixing their marriages. Yeah. We've been pointed in that direction when we've had issues. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, we got a marriage retreat coming up, Mm -hmm. you know, you know, go to the retreat, spend some time with one another Mm -hmm. and, Mm -hmm. But our issues were deeper than right. a, a marriage retreat. Right. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. we almost burnt down the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no, you probably left, was going to leave me in the ocean or something, but no. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. You cannot say those type of things. Um, That was crazy. That was only because I couldn't swim, but. Anyways, you well, see, this you is, know I wouldn't even be getting in the ocean. It is getting worse, but I would right. never even be in the ocean. Like, so. you like, I end up putting you in the ocean, and then you're like, <laughs> only because I, I can't swim. swim, right? Like, I'm joking, guys. I'm joking. I wouldn't Lord. even be because I can't swim. Trust me, I'm never gonna be in the ocean. Well, that's why you were on the mountain. You were never by the water. Okay, okay, that makes sense. All right. <laughs> um. 
yeah, so here's a here's another part. Let me just make sure that I didn't read this over again because my finger was scrolling as we were talking. All right, so those who had experienced domestic violence, abuse, infidelity, and deception at the hands of their spouse described feeling coerced to put on a happy face, to lie publicly, and to make promises they didn't want to. Mm. And again, I can see that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can see that. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like, I remember, like, you know, being at a conference and being asked to do that. Mm-hmm. And in my own mind, mm-hmm. just wrestling with, like, like you guys don't, you don't get it. Mm-hmm. Like, you, you know, like, yeah. but having to kind of walk through it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Even though, like, nothing's fixed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And it's just like, like, what are we doing? Right. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. But again, I didn't want to feel like I was being disobedient. Yeah. Didn't want to feel like, you know, I wasn't participating. Yeah. Which would make it worse. Right. You right. know how people have viewed problems anyway. You see what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So mm-hmm. it's just a horrible feeling yeah. for people to be in. Yeah. You know, um, some found themselves in more danger afterwards when their spouse turned these public declarations or commitments against them. Oh, I, I read that already. Nearly. Seven out of 10 are divorced now. Mm. All right. If you seek a marriage intensive to fix a troubled marriage, is this what you really want? All right. These taxes just put smiley face bandages over the mm. injuries and pressure the abuse victim to stay quiet and to pretend to be happy. They don't change their abusers, abusers mm-hmm. heart. Mm-hmm. And that's true. I mean, yeah. in any instance, not yeah. just in cases of abuse. I think that is a huge, huge issue. But I think even just when it comes to, issues and problems within the marriage. Mm-hmm. It, it, there's no, it's not a band aid. It's yeah. not a, it's not a deep fix. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. It, it doesn't address the conversation. Right. It doesn't address the real issue. Mm-hmm. What it does is it looks to create an experience to move you past the issue. Yeah. That's never really gone. Yeah. It's still there. Yeah. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, we've, you know, you just have had a good moment right. and you feel like, you know, Things are things are fixed. And the thing is, a lot of these, um, especially marriage conferences, it's like group settings. So I'm I'm not going to uh, unload my stuff in front of all these people and probably people I don't know. Like a weekend mm-hmm. to remember, you're going to be going with a lot of people that you don't even know. Yep. Like, you know, because this is everywhere, you know. And so um, I just cannot imagine unloading things, you know, so I don't feel like people are being honest with what they're going through. Mm -hmm. And then if it's a big group and say, if I, if we need this one-on-one intensive or, you know what I mean? I feel like that, that would be a marriage conference to me would be more of a one-on-one intensive weekend or something like that. You know what I mean? Where it's Uh really focusing on, okay, what are, what are we going, what, what are, what are our struggles so we can kind of gear this around you guys? You know what I mean? Just, just the one-on-one. You know what I mean? Absolutely. And I don't even think that unless I don't even think a retreat environment is for that. Right. Right. Yes. So, so, so I agree 110% like the the whole experience is not set up to root out deep wounds and real issues. Right. It's really set up to give you an experience, Mm -hmm. (laughs) you Mm -hmm. know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And to uh, encourage you. Yeah. Yeah. I was reading somewhere they were talking about, you know, how to do with this. They were like, you know, a lot of people go to retreat you know, these retreats. Cause it's just like, I get time away from the kids right. and stuff like that. Right. Right. And and you need that. Yeah. You want to be reinforced. So everybody who goes to these treats and retreats are not going there because of deep problems. problems. Yes. Okay. Correct. However, I think recognizing that people who are going to these retreats do have problems mm-hmm. right. and being careful to understand that yeah. you are, you are giving counsel mm-hmm. without really understanding mm how deep or where the problems actually exist right. and could be pushing something further in opposed to really helping to root something out. Yeah. Um, you know, and this is again where pastors and leaders need to be very careful mm-hmm. like to um, really walk through these issues. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. And then overall, I think you had something to say. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. And I think overall, you know, to be honest with you, I think this also pushes into the issue that we have with discipleship. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, people need to be in one another in relationships, just like you're just explaining. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Whether that's with, you know, a pastor who's counseling them, therapist, whatever that looks like. Yeah. Um, 
you know, there, there needs to be deep work where I just think that, again, we feel like discipleship happens, you know, through teaching mm-hmm. primarily, mm-hmm. you know, that, you know, we go to a conference, we hear a bunch of information and somehow that's supposed to change mm-hmm. everything that we are experiencing yeah. or going through. Yeah. When there are some things that are deeply rooted right. that actually need to be corrected, right? Um, that take more time yeah. and actually need some sophistication or right. some real deep, um, you know, uh, work mm-hmm. that's there. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. and not be sent to a retreat. But but yeah, you know, I, I totally get what's being said here. Yeah. And um, unfortunately, this is the experience of many people mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. who have went to marriage conferences. Yeah. And conferences in general, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, it's the experience yeah. that that they're after, and um, unfortunately, it causes some people pain. Mm. And uh, the sad thing is, it's actually cost some people their marriage, yeah, yeah, and caused people to further be hurt by people who have enacted, um, you know, pain on them or mm-hmm. or something like that mm-hmm. because of the facade or the idea that the marriage is fixed because, you know, we made some imaginary vows or something like that or being manipulated to agree to something that you don't agree to. So, right. So anyway, I just think it's interesting. Mm -hmm. You know, Mm -hmm. I think it's a very interesting and I would say needs to be spoken about. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, again, the whole conference culture Mm -hmm. of Christianity, it's to me, it's, it's horrible. Mm -hmm. It's, it's, there's just these conferences. How do you know how much money is being brought in behind this stuff? Yeah. Yeah. No. I don't know, no, I but I can yeah, guess, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah, saying? It was like, kind of a, yeah, it was kind of, <laughs> right. <laughs> I would think you would know better than me, but I could only imagine, you know, how, yeah. you know, I mean, you've been to money. some of these conferences. Oh with, yeah. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. And you see, you know, mm-hmm. we spend two, three, four hundred dollars, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. you know, for just to get into the conference yeah. and then, and that's are, not even talking about transportation, okay. depending on where it's at. You and know? we've been to some conferences at some large campuses yes. that were, Packed. Yes. And yes. so if we pay five hundred dollars, everybody else pay five hundred dollars, yes. and then all of the book sales yeah. and all of the, you know, all of the uh, items that you're purchasing, right. purchasing the mm-hmm. programs that you're purchasing, um, it's it, it's crazy. Yeah. It's right. crazy how the industrial yeah. complex of church, the system of church, yeah. uh, how this stuff just continues to roll on. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And it shipwrecks a lot of people's faith. Yeah. So, but anyway, I would love to hear your thoughts uh, on this. I'm sure many of you have had some of these types of experiences. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, again, the person's name was Gretchen Baskerville. I'm not sure about the total research I was trying to look at. I wanted to look at the statistics um, that came out of this, out Mm -hmm. of all the people that they um, that they uh, interviewed for this particular thing. But anyway, we'd love to hear your comments. Please drop a line below. Keep the conversation moving forward. Thank you so much for tuning into the Church Dropout. We'll talk to you soon. Good night. Good night. God bless.